Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video we've got a couple of things to discuss, including a few more signings from around the NHL, a small trade between the Carolina Hurricanes and the Philadelphia Flyers, and some trade rumors involving the Minnesota Wild, Nashville Predators, Vancouver Canucks, and Carolina Hurricanes. We'll go to all of that coming up right now. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here at the Internet Hockey Channel. Now, as I usual, I'll kick things off today by discussing a couple of signings that have happened from around the NHL over the past couple of days. Uh, there's been three signings over the past couple of days, and some pretty big ones. We'll start with the one ELC that has been signed over the past three days, and that is that the Toronto Maple Leafs have signed 2023 first round pick Easton Cowan to a three year ELC. They'll have an AAV of $935,000 and will be at the start of this year. Now, for Cowan, he's been playing over in the OHL with the London Knights. Uh, he had a pretty solid season last year, putting up 20 goals and 53 points in 68 games with the London Knights. It looked really good. I think a lot of people were surprised that Cowan was the first round pick of the Leafs. A lot of people have going late second early third round so to see him go late first round was a, little, a really big shocker for a lot of people but he seems like a decent player I think eventually he could be a solid middle six forward whether he be playing on the third line or second line I just think it was quite a surprise that he was picked so high by the Maple Leafs so uh, it's a good sign there for Cowan uh, I think he does have some really good potential and I think if he can continue to grow with the London Knights over in the OHL maybe for this upcoming season, maybe one more year after that, uh, maybe have a year in the AHL. I think in two to three years, he could definitely be challenging for like a, a regular NHL spot. So that's a really good sign for the Leafs, a good intro level contract, and I think Cowan should be a really fantastic forward with the Toronto Maple Leafs. So good ELC for the Leafs. Uh, going over to the Carolina Hurricanes, they've added some more depth on defense as they have signed for Caleb Jones to a one-year, one-way deal that has a AAV of league minimum at $775,000. And they will start at the beginning of this year. Now Jones uh, had a pretty good season last year, putting up four goals and 16 points in 73 games. Not too bad. Uh, he was consistently a second, third pair of defenseman for the Chicago Blackhawks last year, playing on the same team as his brother Seth. So uh, he was doing pretty good. Uh, the Hawks really wanted to get some more youth into their lineup this year, so they didn't qualify him as a RFA. Uh, Jones became a UFA, and he's been on the UFA market for quite a while now. So he gets a league minimum deal with the uh, Canes, which is going to be solid. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to make the roster. The Canes already have a deep roster right now, so it's not overly guaranteed that Jones would definitely make the roster so he might be placed on waivers and be sent down to the minors or claimed by another team before the season starts but it's definitely a really good signing there for the Hurricanes as Jones has shown he can be a really versatile and solid third pair defenseman and I think if there's some injuries or if he's able to make the team out of training camp I think it could be a definitely a really good fit there for the Hurricanes. So, uh, one year league minimum as well. That's going to be a fantastic deal for Jones. And I think if he can have a really good season this year, maybe he can have a little bit of a better payday next year and get a little more of a longer term contract. But for now, he gets a one year deal with a team who can definitely uh, challenge for the Stanley Cup. And I think Carolina's going to have a really good uh, player here in Jones who can be a very versatile third pair of defenseman or scratch. So, very good sign there for the Hurricanes. And then one of the top-end free agents that were still left, and Pius Suter wound up getting his new contract, getting a two-year deal with an AAV of $1.6 million from the Vancouver Canucks. The Canucks signed the center-slash-left winger to a two-year deal with an AAV of $1.6 million. So, Suter, really good player. He started his career in Chicago, played with 27 goals and 55 points, would then go to free agency, signed like a two-year deal with the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, over the past two years, he's done fantastic. Put 15 goals and 36 points, 82 games two years ago with the Red Wings. Last year, put 14 goals and 24 points in 79 games. Was playing a more reduced role with the uh, Red Wings last year after all the free agent additions uh, last offseason. So, uh, still, he was doing pretty well. He's been able to put up at least 14 goals in each of his first three seasons. So if he can continue to put up between like 14 and 20 goals for the Canucks and put up between like 25 and 40 points, he could be a really good addition there for Vancouver. And now they have a solid third line center and then Teddy Bluger can be a good fourth line center. And now they have a really good uh, center depth. They have a one, two, three, four punch down the middle of Pedersen, Miller, 
Suter, and Bluger. So that, that's a really stacked forward group. Uh, I think that's a really good deal for the uh, Canucks. I think Suter is definitely going to be worth that. And I think with the solid center uh, depth they have at this point in time, that's going to be a really good deal. So Suter, uh, one of the top free agents in the market, signs in Vancouver two years, and he's going to be a fantastic third line center for the uh, Vancouver Canucks. So going to be interesting to see that he just does mean that the Canucks have a plethora of forwards, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but definitely, I think Suter's definitely going to make the roster, and he's definitely going to be a solid third line player. So those are the signings updates we can get to here today. Uh, ELC for Easton Cowan with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And then Jones signs in Carolina. And the Canucks are able to get Pia Suter locked up. So some pretty good signings there. Uh, there was one small trade I forgot to mention in my last video that happened recently. And that is that the Carolina Hurricanes and the Philadelphia Flyers. As the Philadelphia Flyers acquired Massimo Rizzo and a 2025 fifth round pick from the Carolina Hurricanes in exchange for David Kasha. And both players that were involved in this deal were traded signing rights. So neither one has a current NHL contract right now. So this is, sounds like what was supposed to be the rumored D'Angelo trade. Uh, D'Angelo is supposed to go to Carolina in exchange for a prospect. A lot of people were expecting that to be Rizzo. So the uh, Flyers are able to get Rizzo and they get a fifth round pick. Uh, definitely, I think it was a... A pretty good deal and it, it sounds like it was just the continuation of the D'Angelo deal. Uh, D'Angelo wound up being bought out by the Flyers and signed with the Hurricanes. It saved the Hurricanes some money uh, getting him as a free agent instead of getting him with some salary retained. So it's sort of like a, a favor to the Philadelphia Flyers to give the uh, Rizzo still to Philadelphia, so it's a, it's a solid deal. Uh, the Flyers are able to get a fifth round pick out of this, so uh, not this year, next year though. So uh, the continues to add to their draft capital, which is a solid addition for Philadelphia. Also, Massimo Rizzo was a 2019 seventh round pick of the Carolina Hurricanes. I've uh, been playing over in college over the past couple of years. Put up 17 goals, 46 points in 38 games with the University of Denver last year. Uh, his signing rights, I'm pretty sure, expire, uh, I think, next year. So they're going to have to try and sign him before then. But I definitely do think they should be able to. I think there's been a lot of talk that Rizzo should be able to sign with the Philadelphia Flyers. So going to be interesting to see. Probably not going to be an NHLer right out of the gate. He's a solid center slash left winger. I think in time he could be a solid maybe fourth or third line forward. So that's a solid deal for the Flyers. They seem to really like him a lot. And even though they weren't able to get him in a Tony D'Angelo deal, it was still a solid deal to be able to bring him in. So it's a solid deal for the Philadelphia Flyers. As for the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, they get David Kasha. Now Kasha, just like Rizzo, doesn't have his uh, contract in place yet. But unlike Rizzo... Uh, Kasha does have some pro-level experience. He was a 2015 fifth round pick of the Philadelphia Flyers, and he does have some NHL games in his belt. He put up six games in the 1920 season, putting up a goal, and he had a game played in the 2020-2021 season and had no points. Now, he didn't sign with the Philadelphia Flyers after his contract expired, and then uh, the Philadelphia Flyers retained his uh, signing rights, so he's uh, still on their reserve list. Uh, this past year, he played in HC Sparta with Czechia over in the Czech Republic, uh, putting up 6 goals and 14 points in 25 games. Looked solid. Still a chance he could be a solid bomb 6 forward for a team like the Carolina Hurricanes, but it sounds like he could still be playing over in Czechia for the next little while. So, going to be interesting to see if they're able to sign him. This is the second time in the past year that uh, Hurricanes have gotten a case. Uh, David Case's brother, Andre Case, was uh, signed last year by the Carolina Hurricanes, played two games with the Hurricanes, and then suffered a concussion, left the team via free agency this past year, and uh, signed over in Czechia as well. So, going to be interesting to see. I think Case definitely has a shot to be a solid NHL uh, forward, at least a bomb six forward, but it's going to be interesting to see if the Canes are going to be able to sign him. So definitely a solid deal in my opinion. You can basically say it's D'Angelo uh, at a cheaper cap hit and Case, who I think could be a solid bomb six forward still for the Carolina Hurricanes. 
uh, going to Carolina in exchange for a fifth round pick, which is some more added draft capital for Philadelphia Flyers, and Massimo Rizzo, who could be a solid bomb six for for Flyers in the not too distant future. So, going to be interesting to see, but that's just a small trade, uh, probably a continuation of the Angelo deal, and a really good deal for both sides, in my opinion. So, a uh, solid deal there. And lastly, here we go over to the trade room part of the video. There are a couple of trade rumors here I want to discuss. Uh, first, we'll start with the uh, Minnesota Wild. Could the Wild acquire the fence move before the season starts? Now, I've seen the Wild be linked to a couple of teams recently, and that is the, the being linked to the Calgary Flames and the fenceman Noah Hannafin and the Montreal Canadiens and the fenceman Jeff Petrie. Now, we know the Wild did lose a couple of big pieces off their blue line this past year. They lost Klingberg who was a trade deadline acquisition, they lost Dumba, uh, they still have a solid team, they have some younger players like Faber and Addison, they're hoping to uh, step into their lineup and have more of a bigger role, but it's going to be interesting to see. Now, they still have to sign Addison and they only have $1.6 million left, so it would be extremely difficult to make any sort of a deal work. But if they can find a way to move out money and get in money at the same time, they should be able to make some sort of a move happen. Now, could they use some uh, insurance on their blue line? I think they absolutely could. At this current point in time, you have Spurgeon, Brody, Middleton, your top three defenders at this point in time. Uh, Faber, Addison should both be challenging for a top four role. And then you also have a couple of guys in Merrill and Goligoski who could be solid sixth, seventh defensemen. But I think they could definitely use at least one possible upgrade on that team. So if they could move uh, Goligoski, who makes $2 million for one of these guys, I think that would be a really good improvement. I mean, if they move Goligoski to Montreal and acquire Jeff Petrie, the cap would only be hit by an extra $300,000. If they were to uh, ask the Calgary Flames to retain uh, half of the salary in Hannafin, and uh, move Gologoski, it'd be really close to money in, money out for the Wild. It would be just a little bit more money in. So I, I think the Wild could do it if they really wanted to. Uh, and I think they do have a need. I think with Br Dumba no longer in the top four, they could maybe have uh, a decent guy like a Petrie or a Hannafin uh, in their top four over the next year or two, depending on which player they get. And if they can uh, continue to run with those players over the next year or two, depending on which player they get, and help their uh, younger players continue to grow into that role instead of thrusting them into a top four role this year. So I, I think it's possible they could go after a guy like Hannafin or P Petrie. I think a guy like Petrie would make a ton more sense because he'd be a lot more cheaper to do. And the Wild, while well, I think they would have the assets to pull off a Hannafin trade, it would still be quite complicated. So it's going to be interesting to see, but I think uh, there's some speculation right now that the Wild could look for a defenseman because they have such a, a young blue line, and they didn't lose some pretty big pieces this offseason. So definitely interesting to see. I think there's an extremely likely possibility that the Wild could go after, especially a guy like Petrie, maybe Hannafin. I think Hannafin's a little bit less likely given the price and his contract. But I definitely think there's a possibility that they could do something like that. So it's going to be interesting to see, but the Wild could be into market for a defenseman, and they could be looking to try and improve that blue line before the season starts. Uh, then we go over to Nashville Predators. Uh, there's been some talk recently that the Preds could look to move a guy like Dante Fabro before a season starts. Now, they went out this offseason, they got a guy like Luke Shen. Uh, they traded uh, Matthias Eckholm for Tyson Berry before the, the trade line in March. So they've been able to improve that blue line, but that blue line now has four regular NHL right shot defensemen. They have Dante Fabro, who was supposed to be a solid top pair in defenseman, hasn't really worked out that way at this point in time. They have Tyson Berry, who's a solid offensive defenseman, but is entering the final year of his deal. Uh, they have Luke Shin, who they signed in for agency to a three-year deal with AV of $2.75 million. And then they have Alex Carrier, who they just signed this offseason to a one-year, $2.5 million deal, and will be a UFA at the end of the next year. And even though he's coming off a pretty bad year, uh, two years ago he had a really good rookie season where he put up 30 points as a defenseman. So uh, they have a really good deep right side. So it, is it possible they could move one? Yes. Is it possible it's Fabro? I think it could be possible. Uh, they do have Kerry and Barry both entering the final year of their deals. So if they aren't able to bring those two guys back, I think it's more likely that Fabro will be a more important piece of their future. So I'm not going to say it's a guarantee. I think it might be a little more likely that we see a possible Barry or Carrier trade. Maybe that happens closer to the trade line if the Predators aren't doing overly well. But I think it is possibly po move on from Fabro. There was a lot of talk around last year's trade line that Fabro could be moved. 
Uh, there was a team like San Jose who was interested, uh, who seemed to be uh, willing to take him on. Uh, I'm not sure if there would still be a fit there. I know San Jose has mentioned a lot. Preds wound up signing him to a one-year, $2.5 million deal, so he sticked around. And now there seems to be some more speculation that he could be moved. So I definitely do think there's a possibility there. Fabro is a good young defense when he's only making $2.5 million. If he can still round out to be a good, solid, at the very least, second pair of defensemen, I think a lot of teams would have some interest in him. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think there would be some interest in him. I'm just not sure if the Preds really want to move him, given the fact that guys like Barry and Carrier are in the final year of their deals. And there is a, a slight possibility they could both... Uh, be gone after next year and if that's so their top right shot defenseman is Luke Shen and do you really want Luke Shen to be your top left right shot defenseman so I, I definitely think they could go into the season with maybe all four of these right shot defensemen maybe try and move one on the left side play with one of those other right shot defensemen and maybe just run with that for the season and then if they're not doing overly well uh, closer towards the trade line maybe they move a guy like Tyson Barry or Alex Carrier but I definitely do think it's possible, I wouldn't say it's a guarantee, but I think it is possible that if they don't feel that Fabro isn't going to be a huge part of the future, they could wind up moving him before the season starts. So, going to be interested to see, but I think it would be more likely that Fabro stays uh, with the Predators over the next little while to continue to run with that team, and then they move Carrier or Barry closer to the deadline, but I do think it is a possibility that Fabro is moved, and not just in the future. It's definitely going to be a situation we have to watch out for. Next, we go over to the Canucks and the Canes. Now, these are sort of nominal effects from those two signings we talked about earlier. Now, the Canes signed Caleb Jones. That gives them nine legit NHL defensemen. They have Slavin, Burns, who are both the top player defensemen. They have D'Angelo, Pesci, Shea, and Orlov, who can all play second pair roles. And then they have Chatfield, Coughlin, and Jones, who can all play third pair roles in a, a pretty good scenario. So... They have nine really good NHL defensemen. Now, they could move one or two on waivers, send them down, uh, run with like a seven or eight defenseman. It would be okay, but I'm not sure that they overly want to do that. Plus, they, like I said in my last video, they still have some holes up front on the forward group. So, it's going to be interesting to see if they do wind up doing anything. But ever since that Caleb Jones... Uh, signing, it sounds like uh, a lot of people think that a trade involving Pesci or Shea is extremely likely to happen in the not too distant future. Uh, Pesci's a solid top four defenseman, Shea's a solid top four defenseman. They both make decent amount of money. I think Shea's just over five million dollars, Pesci's four and a half. So they're both really good uh, defenders. They both were mentioned in the trade room all this past year, and they're both entering the final year of their deal. So, I mean, if they moved Shea, you could put Jones in. If you move Pesci, you can move Chatfield in. I mean, they have a lot of depth on that blue line. It would not hurt their depth at all if they were to move on a Pesci or Shea. So I definitely expect one of Pesci or Shea to be moved before the season starts. Uh, it will depend on which one they feel less confident in signing. I still think Pesci is the more likely of the two. But if they want to keep Pesci uh, for the time being, I could see a guy like Shea possibly be moved as well. So it's going to be interesting to see. I think it's extremely likely now that Jones is signed and they have nine NHL defensemen that they do wind up moving a defenseman before the season starts. So I think it's at this point a matter of time whether they move Pesci, whether they move Shea. I think with the signing of Jones, I think that blue line is just a little bit too crowded right now. And instead of moving uh, possibly Jones and or Coughlin or Chatfield on waivers, I think they have to just try and move one of Shea or Pesci. And if they can move them to get a forward upgrade like I talked about in my last video, I think that would be a, a fantastic addition for the Carolina Hurricanes. They think adding another top nine forward to their team would definitely improve that team a lot. So, in my opinion, if they could do that, that would be a really good addition for the Hurricanes. And last year with the Canucks. Now, the Canucks are in a really difficult situation right now. Now, after the PS Tudor signing, they have about 15 or 16 legit NHL forwards on that roster. So, it's a really crowded forward group. The center depth isn't as crowded. They do have a guy like Amon, who's probably going to be a spare at this point in time. And then they have their top four uh, centers, like I talked about before. But their wingers are still pretty uh, crowded. And at this point in time, after the Suter signing, with Suter getting an AAV of $1.6 million, that gives the Canucks over $4.9 million on the cap right now. So they're over the cap right now. They can get under the cap technically right now if both Pullman and Pearson are long-term injury eligible uh, before the season starts. Uh, so Pearson makes a $3.25 million cap hit. 
you have Pullman making a two and a half million dollar cap hit. Together, they make a five point seven five million dollar cap hit. If those two were to both be placed on long term injury reserve, they would have around seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in cap space. So they don't have to do anything if both of those guys are healthy. But there has been a lot of talk uh, I've seen before a couple weeks ago that Pearson had some optimism of possibly making the roster out of training camp, and. It's possible that Pearson's injury is not as bad as we once thought. And Pearson could start getting back in training camp. So if Pearson's back, that's $3.25 million that could be placed on long-term injury reserve is not. And if it's not, they would have just over $2.5 million uh, still tied up above the cap. So it's, it seems like if Pearson's healthy, they're going to have to make a move at some point, uh, whether it be between now and training camp or before the season starts uh, to become cap compliant. So there's definitely going to be a couple of ways they can try and make a move. There are definitely a couple of ways the Canucks can try and uh, free up cap space. Uh, there's still some talk about possible Myers deal. Uh, if Myers possibly goes to San Jose, I've even heard some people link him to a team like Columbus. So it sounds like there could still be a Myers trade in place. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if it does wind up happening. It still seems unlikely to happen until September when his signing bonus is paid. But if they were to move Myers in a big enough trade, uh, don't take on too much cap, that could lead to them being cap compliant. It's possible. But I, I still think that they could move a forward as well. So uh, I'm looking at a guy like Bouvillier, who was entering the final years deal over $4 million cap hit. If they could move him, uh, that could be a good way for your cap space. There's still Connor Garland, has a couple of years left, three years, at $4.95 million cap hit. He could be a possible option there for a trade option. Uh, I think it's less likely at this point, but you also have Brock Besser, two years left at $6.65 million in cap space. Uh, he's making a pretty decent amount, and the way he finished the season, I could see some teams be interested in him, but I think the Canucks will be more inclined to keep Besser. So I'd be looking at Garland, Bouvillier, and Myers as three prime options for the Canucks to figure out cap space. If Pearson is making the team, or at the very least not healthy and could be placed on waivers. The $3.25 million cap is not going to be able to place an LTR, which isn't going to save the Canucks. So I think there's going to have to be a move if Pearson is healthy enough to play in training camp. And I think they're going to have to move someone. I think Myers is a prime option. I think it's still possible they could move him to San Jose for LeBanc. I think it's possible they could move him to a team like Columbus for maybe like another defenseman. I, I think it's still possible. I think you have Garland. I think if they can move Garland for maybe like a cheaper right shot defenseman to replace Myers if they do move him, I think that could be a possibility. I think they could also move Bouvillier for possibly a cheaper right shot defenseman as well after the season he had with the Canucks after being acquired from them. So going to be interesting to see, but I would not be shocked at all if Vancouver was uh, interested in freeing up some cap space before the season starts and maybe made a move or two, maybe move Myers. Uh, maybe possibly in that Sharks deal to try and get uh, some cap space and then maybe move it forward as well to possibly get a, a Tyler Myers replacement. It's possible. So I definitely do expect the Canucks to make some sort of move before the season starts. They're going to be a team to watch out for over the next month, months and a half before the season starts. Uh, to definitely keep your eye on. I think there's an extremely likely chance the Canucks move, at the very least one, if not two, possibly f players before the season starts. So keep your eye on Myers, keep your eye on Garland, possibly Bavilli as well. I think those three guys are prime candidates to help the Canucks move some money out and get them to be cap compliant if Pearson is really going to be healthy enough to play in training camp. So, going to be interesting to see, but that's all the uh, trade rumors we're going to talk about today. Uh, definitely let me know what you think down in the comments on all that was discussed today. Who do you think won the Philadelphia Carolina trade? Uh, if you incorporate Tony D'Angelo in that trade as well, uh, signing with the Carolina Hurricane as part of that trade, uh, who do you think won that deal? Do the Wild acquire the fenceman for a season starts? Can they get a guy like Hannafin? Can they get a guy like Petrie for a season starts? Or do you think they'll most likely go into their uh, season with the decor they have at this point in time? Do the Preds move Fabro? I think it's a possibility. I think it might be a little bit more likely that a guy like Barry or Carrier are moved closer to the deadline. But I think it is a possibility that Fabro could wind up being dealt. So definitely let me know what you think. Uh, do the Canes move Pesci? or Shea before the season starts, I think it's extremely likely that Pesci or Shea are moved. 
I think it's more likely Pesci, given the fact he's already shot the fence and the contract negotiations haven't gone well, but I think it's also possible they could move Chase, so definitely keep your eye on the Canes. And do you think the Canucks could possibly move a, a player to free up cap space? If they don't have the ability to place Pearson on long-term injury reserve, and they are still about $2.5 million over the cap, I think it's extremely likely that Myers, Garland, maybe Bouvillier are moved to try and free up their cap space. So, going to be interesting to see, but I think the Canucks are definitely going to be a team to watch out for over the next little while. Definitely let me know what you think in the comments section. Which player do you think the Canucks are most likely going to move if they do need to free up cap space? But that's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video, and if you really liked it, remember to subscribe down below. I also do a blog, talk about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that, so definitely check that out. I'll leave a link to that in the description below, and I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.